Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Terathon Container Library. What exactly is this? Well, it is a freshly open source C++ uh, library of containers, common data types, things like arrays, lists, maps, hash tables, trees, and graphs. You know, the kind of stuff that you generally get out of something like the standard template library. Well, these were a set of implementations from a fellow named Eric uh, Lengel. I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, the, the primary developer behind the C4 engine. As you can see, he also previously worked at Naughty Dog, Apple, Sierra, etc. So he's definitely got some pedigree. And these were the libraries that were used for the C4 engine and in other projects. And, you know, things like arrays and lists, pretty important and fundamental to your game or any kind of software in general. Now, this was actually released a couple days ago, and I didn't cover it. And I didn't cover it for a very specific reason. They were released under the GPL license. And GPL license is certainly not my favorite when it comes to code licenses. Now, if you're not releasing a library or something like that, it can be great. The, the uh, Blender Foundation is under the GPL, for example, because they want to keep everything open source. But when you're dealing with just a small utility library, uh, GPL is a death note. But the good thing is, uh, a couple days later, or yesterday, uh, he updated it. So the Terathon Container Library, as well as his other libraries, the Math Library, uh, the Open data description language and the open uh, game exchange, which was sort of a, an attempt to get something like uh GLTF going earlier, or USD, somewhere in between, it's kind of a common interchange format he proposed. Uh, those have all been moved to the MIT code licenses as well. So if you're interested in checking out the Terathon container libraries, they are up on uh, GitHub right now. They are now under the MIT license, which makes me very happy. Uh, you see a variety of containers, like array, list, map, hash table, tree, uh, and graph. Uh, one of the things to know about this, and this is a very big difference from STL, with the exception of array, these containers are all in Intrusive, meaning the objects that can be stored in each container inherits from helper classes that take care of all the bookkeeping. For example, if you have a class called object and you want to store it in a linked, li link linked list, then object must have a linked uh, sorry, a list element of object as base class, and it can be stored in the container of type list object. So one of those things to be aware of, it's just a design different. Um, there's also a separate proprietary license available if you need it. Uh, but now that it is under the MIT license instead of the GPL v3 license, uh, it is legit more useful. As you can see here, it's just basically a set of CPP and H files. Uh, I'm kind of getting spoiled by header only libraries, but again, that's more of a newer development. These things have been in development since I think 2004, 2005, when the C4 engine first came about. Speaking of which, what is the C4 engine? Well, C4 engine is a game engine that's been around for, okay, all the way back to 2005. Um, you can see some details of its architecture right there. It, it kind of started getting a little bit on the dated side, but it is uh, just kind of a full-blown 3D game engine. It used to make a couple of commercial games, actually. Uh, interestingly enough, it was changed or replaced by something called the tombstone engine and then that just didn't seem to go anywhere so i don't know where that one ended up uh, but if you're interested in learning more uh you can buy a license for a hundred bucks and their perpetual license as you can see if you bought one back uh 17 years ago you are still getting the updates and there is a new update coming shortly i'll check it out again when 7.0 is released now the reason i mentioned the c4 engine is all of the things that we were talking about here so for example the array class they are all documented in the C4 engines documentation. So if you want to learn how these things work and why they work, all of this stuff is well documented. You can see details of it uh, in action right here. So the C4 um, utility libraries is basically what we were talking about today. Uh, and all of the various different bits that you may wish to use are uh, well documented in this particular case. Uh, the other thing to be aware of, again, he has changed all of his other projects as well. So you may actually be more interested in one of them. So it's kind of a, a double news video because there is, for example, the Terathon math library. Uh, and then open gex and ddl but probably the one that most people would be interested in is his math library well it is now under the mit license instead of the gpl license which means you can actually use it for something and this is things like vectors points matrices transforms um quaternion quaternion why do i always forget how to say that quaternions uh not said that wrong in the end it's a word that is just it's like my foliage basically uh motors flectors and so on so if you are needing to do um mathematics library uh this is the basis point for it uh so all of the various different uh 
common math structures that you would need to work with to build your own math libraries, they are actually in here. So in many ways, this one actually is probably more interesting to people than the container library. Uh, I'm not actually sure if this uses the container library internally for its own data structures. Could be. Uh, I'm not 100% certain either way. But the key thing here is it is now MIT licensed instead of GPL licensed, which in my translation means it is now usable code, which is a nice thing to see. So those are the, the key things. You can check it out again in his GitHub. Both of them are available there. So you got the Terathon math library, the container libraries, and then we've got these other guys as well. Um, now you may be asking yourself, okay, why wouldn't I just use the standard template library? And once upon a time, like 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, back when it was first released, I think STL came with C++03. Uh, so give you a timeline wise. Well, the standard template libraries did not work ideally across all platforms. There were some performance issues. It was not a performance first issue. So way back in the day, Electronic Arts actually created their own high speed port of STL. So basically this is just STL. It's the exact same thing as STL. It's just focused on performance and speed. So if you're trying to do STL specifically for games, you'd probably use the EA STL. And the standard template libraries are, well, they're standard. Uh, so it, they provide the same kind of details, you, you know, again, uh, vectors, uh, maps, trees, that kind of stuff are all implemented in this. EA STL is a very game specific port, although to my understanding, the standard template libraries itself, the ones that you, you know, your C++ 17 or 20 or whatever, 23 compiler ships with are now uh, perfectly performant. Uh, so this this robust and high performance implementations of it uh, from EA aren't really as required. So if you want to just use the STL, uh, then you, you could go the EA STL route or from the sounds of it, you can just basically go with STL. But the Terathon container libraries are, they're not an STL port. I don't want to get that uh, perception in mind. Again, as you can see, even from the instructions here, uh, this intrusiveness, that is a very different way of implementing things. So if you just simply uh, don't like what the STL provide or how they provide it or the way they work, uh, but you're looking for the common data types, you know, again, arrays, graphs, hash trees, or hash, um, hash tables, uh, lists, maps, uh, and so on, trees, very common data structures that you're going to run into in just about any kind of code situation a, like of any kind of complexity. Well, it could be that the Terathon container libraries are a better fit for the way you code. Uh, again, it's nice that they are under the MIT license, and it's also, again, nice uh, that they are documented. So if you're uh, looking for actually figuring out how this stuff works, uh, as you saw earlier, I'm going to map this time instead. Everything is documented. It is just described. You get some examples of how it works. And it's probably a little bit simpler than working with the standard template libraries on the whole. Uh, and since this is basically just, um, you know, a bunch of code that you dump in, literally, you just dump this into your project. There's no linking or dependencies or anything. Working with a library like this is really easy. Uh, so it, it's not really a huge challenge to get up and running. Uh, but the ultimate question of why uh, I can't answer with you, can't answer that to you because I haven't actually worked with this library to see if there's anything that's you know better or worse than working with STL or if you need performance, the EA STL libraries. But uh, definitely interesting that it is out there and it's now under the MIT license instead of the GPL license. Uh, as you can see from the fact, I didn't cover this release at all when it was under GPL, just because it's literally useless to 99% of people when it is a GPL license. And again, the math libraries as well are also very interesting. Again, probably more interesting to the majority of people. They were open sourced as well. So let me know what you think. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.